Should a senior have a will or a revocable living trust? This is a, an extremely interesting question and uh, I actually wanted to start out by saying we have some other materials on the website where I go into this question in detail. It's an article that I published in the local paper talking about revocable living trust and whether you should have one or not. Uh, a lot of times uh, attorneys market for the revocable living trust because attorneys generally charge more for a revocable living trust than they do for will-based estate plans. My article attempts to give a fair and balanced presentation of the advantages and disadvantages. Um, basically the way you avoid probate is first you have to consider what probate is and that is the process of changing title to the beneficiaries from assets titled in the decedent's name alone. So if assets aren't entitled in the decedent's name alone, perhaps you don't need to do anything with probate. And this could be like POD accounts with a bank. Pay on death is what POD means. Um, also beneficiary designations on IRAs or insurance are generally not going to have to go through probate. Jointly owned real estate, either between spouses or when it's not between spouses, if it says rights of survivorship on the deed, also will pass to the survivor without probate. And a, a revocable living trust is probably the best way of doing that because basically you create a trust document and it talks about what's going to happen during your lifetime, talks about what's going to happen at your death, and then in order to make it work you then have to transfer the assets to the trust so that they are not owned by the decedent at the time of death. Uh, again, I would direct you to that article to talk about some of the considerations that happen after death. Many times, uh, even with a revocable living trust, you're going to need some professional assistance to help you administer that trust after the death of the owner. And the key there is to get a qualified attorney to help you but not to pay an excessive fee. Um, one example of, of an issue that you might have is with real estate in the trust. Um, when that is sold after death, the title insurance company is going to want to make sure of a couple things, whether or not there are creditor claims against the property and uh, whether or not there are tax liens against the property. Uh, on the uh, death tax lien situation, that's fairly easy to cure. On the creditors, it's t difficult to prove that without some kind of a probate action whereby you publish notice to creditors and they have a limited period of time to file claims. Otherwise, you might have to wait two years after death before you could uh, easily sell that property.